All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, so my name is Dr. Nicole Pauls. I'm a professor here at UCSF in the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics. And today I'll be sharing with you some data that we're hopefully going to spin out of my lab, where we've been developing universal off-the-shelf gene therapy platforms for an array of cancers. My team and I have decided to name our company Avail Therapeutics, and our first indication is glioblastoma. So a little about glioblastoma. Glio is the most common and deadliest malignant brain cancer in humans, and I have some relevant statistics here on the right. So 225,000, this is the number of people who are going to die of glioblastoma this year. 5%, this is the five-year survival rate for glioblastoma. This is one of the worst cancers you can get. And perhaps the most striking statistic, two months. This is the average increase in life expectancy with the current standard of care, even somewhere here like UCSF, which has the number one neurology and neurosurgery department in the nation, according to UCSF. So we need to do more. And at Avail, we actually believe that your own immune system can be the cure for glioblastoma. It simply needs to be redirected to the site. So how does this technology work? So Avail is based off AAV, or adeno-associated virus, which is a gene therapy vector that delivers a proprietary payload to recruit your own immune system to the site. So how this works, we take the uh, AAV virus, we direct it, uh, inject it directly into the glioblastoma tumor during the time that the surgeons are removing the tumor. The, the bits of the tumor that remain in the cavity are where the virus goes. It will then, those cells will then express and secrete the immune recruiting payload, uh, and just like it sounds, that will recruit the immune cells to the site where they can then destroy the tumor in place. And so I'm going to go through a little bit of a description about how this methodology is set up. This is set up the same for all of our different studies, whether it's allografts, xenografts, or patient-derived xenografts. So in all these cases, we take these tumors, we transplant them into the recipient mouse brains, we allow them to grow up over the course of several weeks till they're a sufficient size to treat, then we come in and we do that infusion of the Avail virus using the exact same method we use in patients. It's called CED, or Convection Enhanced Delivery. And then over the course of several weeks, uh, these, um, the immune cells are recruited to the site, and we monitor the mice for various parameters. And I'll be going over one of those parameters here, the most important one, which is overall survival. And so I'll be showing data from one of our cohorts. So this is the Xenograph mouse group. So these mice have human glioblastoma. They've been treated with a veil, and they show a significant improvement in overall survival. So the way you can look at this graph on the y-axis here is percent survival. On the x-axis, we have time and days since the time of treatment. We have two relevant control groups here. In purple, we have the saline control. In blue, we have the AAV control. So this group gets the exact same volume, dose, and serotype capsid of AAV, but rather it just expresses an irrelevant gene. And then we have our treatment group here in yellow that receives a veil. And these mice continue to survive and survive and survive. And they show that classic immuno-oncology curve when you have a successful therapy. You don't have to believe me that these results are significant. You can actually take this fantastic quote that I got from the co-director of the UCSF Preclinical Therapeutics Corps, where these studies were actually done, who told me this last, last November. I must say, I have been in this business for over 24 years, and this is one of the best results I have ever seen. Striking. So the Avail team is led by myself. Again, my name is Nicole Polk. I'm a professor here at UCSF. Um, I'm one of the co-inventors of this technology here at UCSF. I have 13 years of experience in the AAV gene therapy space from my PhD, postdoc, instructorship, and now my professorship here at UCSF. I've spun off two successful companies based on uh, technologies that I've helped develop, and I have numerous pat uh, patents in the AAV space for a number of the chimeric capsids that I've developed and have shared with numerous companies. Uh, rounding out the rest of my interdisciplinary team are Laura, Eleanor, Kathleen, and Lucy, who hail from places like Berkeley, Haas, and Genentech, MIT, Gladstone, and Stanford, with expertise in business development, various types of bioengineering, as well as computational biology. We've been very fortunate to have a fantastic team of scientific advisors, more than can even fit on this slide, uh, most of which are led by the uh, UCSF Brain Tumor Center. Indeed, this project is spun out of the glioblastoma precision medicine project here at UCSF. And that's the, uh, this work is all, um, or that center is led by uh, Dr. Nicholas Butowski, who's the Director of Translational Research at the Brain Tumor Center, and who's been advising us. Uh, a key collaborator to mention here is Peter Dickinson, who's actually going to be running the canine clinical trial that we're going to be running at UC Davis here in about three months. So this is going to be a combination phase one, two safety and efficacy trial out at UC Davis, testing our avail technology in dogs who also get spontaneous glioblastoma, just like humans.
And we've been very fortunate to have two fantastic business mentors throughout the course, Lisa and Regina from Bay Angels and Bay Air Innovation. So I'll break down how we calculate the U.S. market opportunity. It's obviously global, but I'm just going to talk about U.S. today. So the total glioblastoma market, this is composed of all of the newly diagnosed patients as well as all of the patients with, with recurrent glioblastoma. And this is times what we're spending on each of these patients each year, which is $150,000 on average per patient per year. And of this total market, about 60% of those patients will undergo some type of brain tumor sur surgery, and this allows us to already have an easy access point to do our direct administration right into the tumors in the brain, which means we don't have to worry about problems like crossing the blood-brain barrier, and we don't have to worry about pre-existing neutralizing antibodies in the bloodstream against the capsid. And of these patients, 61% are going to be patients who are newly diagnosed. And we chose this patient population on purpose. This was after extensive interviews with the neuro-oncology team here at UCSF, who specifically suggested going after newly diagnosed patients because their immune system is still intact. They haven't gone through multiple rounds of chemo and radiation that have potentially destroyed their immune system's ability to respond. And because we're an immunotherapy, gene therapy, we need them to have a functioning immune system. Now, all of these numbers are based off pricing for the current standard of care, which, remember, doesn't work. So if we actually think about the added value that our product brings, we think that we can price this much more like a classic gene therapy, like the already FDA-approved Luxterna, which is $850,000 per treatment. And now this, um, this market expands to upwards of potentially $6.5 billion. So the Avail platform technology has a number of significant advantages in key areas compared to our competitors. The key competitors here being CAR-T immunotherapies, oncolytic viruses, antibodies, and small molecules. So if we start for, first with those companies that provide a universal therapy, you can see that the CAR-T technologies drop out here. And this is because, because you have to remove the cells from the patient, edit them, and give them back. This adds um, a number of, um, this adds um, co cost, time, and complexity to the process that the glioblastoma patients um, uh, can't wait for. If we then go to those that have demonstrated efficacy to date, you can see that the antibodies and small molecules drop out at this point. So the small molecules, this is the current standard of care. This is temozolomide, which already established um, is not effective. And the antibodies um, so far to date have not been very effective in the glioblastoma cases, and indeed there's some conflicting clinical trial data there. And so of those that have demonstrated efficacy, we actually feel that Avail has one of the most important factors, which is safety, um, because the two technologies here, Tokogen and Astari, this is a retrovirus and a chimeric poliovirus-based therapy, and these are live replicating viruses, which come with a number of potential safety risks. So having a therapy that's based off AAV is safest because it's naturally um, non-replicating, naturally non-lytic, and not a known human pathogen. The business model for Avail, once we finish our preclinical milestone study in canines, we have three options to advance to phase one. We might stay internally a little bit longer and acquire grants either from the UCSF Catalyst Program or an SBIR to add value. Uh, we might uh, do a seed round uh, to try to do the phase one study ourselves uh, here at UCSF. Another option would be to partner with Biopharma at this stage and leverage their regulatory and clinical expertise to move forward. Um, speaking of biopharma, there's been a number of recent AAV gene therapy acquisitions, and these companies have been uh, commanding a high price on the open market. Some of them have been acquired even preclinically. So here we have Astellas that acquired Quithera, an AAV gene therapy company, and uh, their eye gene therapy platform for $109 million preclinical. They only had mouse proof of concept data, which is where we're at right now. If you get acquired at phase one, two, uh, you can be um, upwards in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And if you get acquired in phase two and beyond, it can be in the billions. Yep. Uh, the milestones, we have the canine trial uh, coming up, as I mentioned. Then we'll do farm talks, GMP plasma manufacturing, our IND, and then we qualify for a number of different designations, orphan, breakthrough, and fast track. And in summary, we're a novel gene therapy platform that recruits your patient's own immune system. We have proof of concept data in xenograph mice, canine coming soon, a large market opportunity, and a fast pathway to approval. And a little about our name. The name of AIL means to help or benefit. And the Veil Therapeutics, using the power of AAV gene therapy, we hope to do just that. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I was curious about how you were planning to deal with the issues of genetic heterogeneity within glioblastoma and, and the targeting, and also whether you saw 
uh, concomitant therapy with other immuno-oncologic agents or immunomodulating agents is required for your therapy? So for the first phase one, we probably won't um, subdivide patients based off gene expression status. But one of the advantages is during that first phase one trial, when we get those biopsies, we can then um, type all those patients and look to see of those who respond, you know, are they, you know, MGMT, you know, positive, for example, uh, et cetera. And then we can subtype in, in later trials. Um, Without telling you what the secret sauce is, we shouldn't need to subtype based off what we're delivering, um, but it could be a way to potentially um, make the trials even more effective um, moving forward. And then the second part of your question was... Other agents that might be needed, like other things to modulate the immune response. Oh, um... You mean like combining with like a PD-L1 inhibitor or something like that? Uh, yeah, that could definitely be something we try try in in future trials. But in the first trial, that's that's not the intent. Right. I noted that this is an all women's group. It's a really nice to see strong <laughs> women <at> innovation. <laughs> we need more of you guys. <laughs> it's really nice. um, I guess I just have a quick question. So, um, with regards to technology, um, what is the sort of secret sauce here? Are you talking about an optimized capsid? <laughs> It is not an optimized capsid, capsid, I can tell you that. So I did that work in the past, but uh, no, the secret sauce is the is the payload itself. This, these are off-the-shelf capsids. Okay, thank you. And all I can say is just that it helps to remove, recruit the immune system. That was my question. What's <laughs> the damn payload? But that's all right. I can't tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about the mouse model that uh, that you've used? Is it a, is it used in this setting? Is this your own model from the lab? This is the classic industry standard xenografts into athymic mice. We've also done allografts. We've also done patient-derived xenografts. Hi. Quick question. I noticed you have some computational biology expertise on the team. Is there a computational or data science angle? That, or where is that in, the, in, your, in your IP? In the IP? In, 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 your, in your technology, in your secret sauce. Is there one as part of it? Uh, not with the current version of Avail 1, but the plans thereafter are basically if we can get the patient sequencing data to then um, subtype the patients, and then we could also potentially add in a number of um, you know, maybe specific regulatory elements that would be useful for different subtypes of patients, but not with the first, the first version. So I should just clarify for the judges, I don't know if this is on. Um, these teams, is this on? Thank you. Uh, these teams are Startup 101 teams, not the technology team. There is a team, I'm sure, behind Nikki uh, at, at UCSF working on the technology. So you, you can look at the backgrounds here, which are all wonderful, but they're not the ones who have been working on the science in this project. They are here just for the class itself, and they may stay together. They may not, may not start together, stay together. Um, so just keep that in mind as you take a look at, at who's working with whom. Okay. All right. Thank you, team.